Welcome to Stacy J Studio. Like, subscribe, and care to share. Hashtag Friday. So is this today a little about my life? A week sewing in my room. Next week, what I might just do? Mr. Christopher might barge in. Mabel and Willow's barks begin. It's the crazy house here on YouTube. I love to share. Hi, I'm Stacey J and this is my studio. Welcome back to anyone who has been watching me before and welcome if you're new. Thank you very much for tuning into my channel and if you care to take a dare, I'll make a bet with you. Sorry, just went down to Georgia. I was looking for a soul to steal. Anyway, if you care <laughs> to see more um, stuff from me, stuff is the word I'm using, please feel free to hit the subscribe button and the notification button, get the bell up, and then you won't miss any of my ramblings. Today is Friday Sews, hashtag Friday Sews. We started from Jen in today in Jen's sewing room. I'll put that hashtag up. Make sure you go and have a look at those hashtags um, when you finish watching me, because if you are interested in sewing, Jen the whole idea of getting this hashtag started was to make sure that we got a community of sewists so that you guys can tune in and check us out as we do check out the other hashtag Friday Sews and it is a fantastic community and have made loads of friends. First, before I forget, I'd like to say a huge shout out to Steph Park's husband. Hi, thank you very much. You know why? Anyway, um, enough of that. I would also like to say what I am wearing. Today I'm wearing my style of the fur and bird dress. Now this is a panel fabric, so I had to shake it up a little bit. Fur and bird is, I'm just going to jolt you down. Fur and bird is a designer in New Zealand in Nelson, the sewing revival. And this is my little cut on this one i wanted to get the full panel in unfortunately the fabric was torn at the front i actually got these this panel for free or the, the double panel for free because um he just said if you can do something with it do something with it and I've, i have got two other panels so now i don't know what to do but anyway so this is i had some fabric white fabric to go with it well it doesn't really go with it but i added white fabric actually half of my facing is also Facing is also um, white. And if you turn around here, you get the full picture. And let me just make sure I'm in. Yep, you get the full picture of the tiger, as my daughter said when she saw it. I am the tiger. Yeah, anyway, so mine is more. I am the tiger. That's the generation I come from. So, hashtag Friday Sews, you talk about, oh, the pants I'm wearing, sorry, are uh, my. Um, my rivet and peacock pants which I had I got the ready-made from um, from easy buy and I did not actually like them because they came down narrow so I added a wedge because they look like little pins on me well it looked like a peg leg kind of not peg leg um you know like pegs anyway because it just looked weird on me I didn't like it so I wedged them out and yes and so hashtag Friday so you talk about what you've made for the week or what what you plan on making in the following week and also anything about life you would have heard that in my little ditty that starts off my Friday, hashtag Friday so's now today it's early it is just gone 2 17 now normally I film it at five o'clock at night after I've I don't know, coming to a draw of clothes of the day. So I am ahead of myself. My daughter wants to go walking with the dogs at 3.30, um, which is unusual for her to come and ask that. It's been a teacher's only day, and I might have forgotten and texted her and asked if she was ready, but I might have woken her up. But she woke me up at midnight-ish and said, did you feel that? And I said, what? And she said, the earthquake so i jumped on geonet and um the last earthquake was 6 30 the day before and i sent it to her and said there was no earthquake weird she says i said yes and i'm going back to sleep good night so anyway yes that was my 12 o'clock drama wake up gotta love that 
Okay, um, last time I spoke to you was Friday. I will be getting back into the um, two, three, uh, through the week. Sorry, I've been a bit, let's just say a bit. So I haven't been able to do that. I haven't done that. Um, and what have I done this week? Saturday, um, I, I said that I had a sore back on Friday. On Saturday, I literally stayed in bed until the spa was warm. Now, sorry, itchy eyeball. Stacy doesn't do spas. Stacy doesn't do hot baths either. She doesn't do cold baths, but I don't lay there. Like, my mother loves it. I know so many people that love it. I sat in the spa for two hours. I felt every pore was full of water. But to be fair, um, my back felt a bit better. Um, so it's two hours, two hours. The only reason I got out, it was getting cool, but I could have pushed the button and made it warm again, was that people were coming over to pick up some firewood because I, I hopped in the spa. <laughs> I hopped in the spa, which is outside on the deck, and right opposite the deck is the brew shed. And the brew shed, outside the brew shed, has the tree that we chopped down and wood. Um, I'd say a pile of wood, but that would probably in turn make you think that it was neatly stacked. It was thrown in from all different. I reckon someone threw some from Auckland and just where it landed, it landed. Chris, Mr. Christopher is not the... I'm not gonna say tidiest. Yeah, okay. He's not the he's not the he's not the straighten up tidy kind of guy, you know. Um so this firewood has eventually over the last few years just got worse and worse and worse. So from my spa, I said, and he knew I wasn't happy, so I wasn't sitting there relaxing, having a good time. I said to him, dude, get rid of that. I said, What is that? And he goes, It's firewood for the brazier. I said, Okay, where's the brazier? He goes, Well the brazier melted when it got too hot and the welding broke. And I said, So why do we have the firewood? Are we gonna use the brazier? We've got two electrical heaters for when we're out on the deck. Oh no. And I said, I want you to get rid of it. And he goes, Oh, okay, well I'll find somebody that's got a fire. No, he said, Oh okay, well I'll just burn off um slowly in the in the ground brazier as in the brazier that we have out further i said no you won't because that would take a month of sundays well it should take a year of sundays to get that all burnt i said no you won't i said john c and aj have just got their fire started it's fixed i said you ask them if they want the wood and because i'm already angry because my back's sore i'm already angry because i have to sit in the freaking spa i'm already angry because i'm sick of that pile of wood so he texted him. So they're coming at two o'clock <laughs> to get this pile. <laughs> get as much as they could. And um, yeah, so I showered and got dressed and sat in one of those lovely um, wing backs that I fixed up so he could sit in them nicely in the house. And it was nice and warm. So I sat there and John C, although she bought gloves to help, sat with me while the boys did the work. And um, which if I was fine and fit as a fiddle, I would have a probably not really seen the wood there well I have seen it but I was sick of it by the stage and um and so I would have actually helped put the wood on the back of the truck but I didn't so her and I sat down and had a cup of tea which was much much better and so that was Saturday and so Sunday I got up still angry back was still a bit coosed it was father's day it's my second father's day without my father um my emotions rage feelings um could have gone any which way they could and they went probably in a way that i just needed to get out of the house so i hopped in the car said goodbye where are you going don't know how long are you gonna be don't know off i went so i went and um drove up to um Ramari and i sat at the beach and i actually wrote some stuff that's going to go on my blog now i have given that to somebody to have a look at this person is um has not only wrote, written their own book um much more professional than what i'm going to be but um also is more academic than i am with yep so when i write i write how i would say it yeah crazy right 
a real mess. And being dyslexic, I miss out on certain words and all. I'll get the whole sentence in my brain. It's understandable, but on paper, it not so much. So anyway, so I've got that, and that's um, going to come out in my blog, which I'll give you details of when we get the blog actually functioning on my website, which would be good, because currently it's nothing on there. Um, and because I've had a few people say, yes, they're quite keen to read about what I've got to say. I mean, you realize that it's you're going to get into this thing in here, and that's just nuts. Anyway, so um, so I was at Real Maddie for quite some time era typing. I took my computer with me, and um, sorry, I got an itchy nose. I forgot about my nose because that's Monday's day. Obviously, I'm telling you about life first. Um, so, um, and up in Paraparaumu, they have a spotlight. So I went there. Now, let me say that both spotlights in the Wellington region, so Paraparaumu and um, Nauranga Gorge, they both have car parks that are owned by a civilian company. And at Nauranga Gorge, you are allowed 90 minutes in, in spotlight. And at um, Paraparaumu, you're allowed 60 minutes. I put the timer on. 60 minutes. That's all I was allowed. It's probably a good thing. Because I found out where the cheap fabric was. You know, the one they're on sale. So while I'm talking about Spotlight, and while I'm talking about cheap fabric that was on sale, I will show you what I bought. This is a cotton jersey. Okay, it's a four-way stretch, which are really good for tights. I'm not making tights. Um, I bought, I want to say three meters. I want to say three meters. Let me just see if I've got the receipt in here. I don't have the receipt in there. I don't know where the receipt is. Huh. Right. So that is a nice four-way stretch. It is actually a really nice fabric. They accidentally charged me full price for that, so I got a credit on that, so that was good. So I was like $103, not this, all the stuff. Um, and it was like, you yeah, know, hang on, that saying that, but it's that, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. We had just talked in the queue about women constantly that say sorry for I said people bump into me at the supermarket and I say oh sorry and they just like walk away and I'm like and actually you bumped into me but no I don't I say sorry who does that oh hang on me so actually let's have a look I think I've got a really it's really nice and it's got a good good um uh, return on the stretch recovery these the word you know I couldn't think of the word on Sunday so it's one and a half I thought I got three. Must have got four. It must be four meters. So that was pretty good. So I got four meters of that. And then I found this fabric. Now, unfortunately, there was only this much left, and I think it was only a meter and a half. But oh, it was like a meter point four. Got charged for a meter point four. God, they're just so tight in spotlight. Eh? You'd think that the people own the company. This fabric. It's a linen. Linen cotton blend. So I don't know what I'm making with it, but I just thought it was so pretty. So that was, um, mm, 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 I think that was $10 a meter. I think the other one was $6 a meter, the green one. And then this one was also $10 a meter. Now, I think this was the, the toss up I had with the other fabric I got a while back, which wasn't on sale. So this was on sale for $10 a meter. Isn't that cool? I mean, I like faces. I do like faces. It's really hard to find faces. Does that make you sick when I do that? Is that like, yeah, I will stop doing that now. So yeah, I got that. I'm sure what I'm making with it, but I got the significant amount. I think I got three meters. One, two, yeah got three meters of that so that's all I bought because you know I was on a time budget so I did that 
Then I went and got myself something to eat. And then I came home. And when I got home, the second or another, some more wood was going back to um, AJ and Johnson's place. And so I got home to the house to be empty for a while, which was good to bring me down out of my Zen mood. And then, yeah, so that was my Sunday. Yeah, that was my Sunday. And then Monday arrived. Now, Monday, I had an appointment with the skin specialist in at Wellington. So I was all prepped, knowing I was going into Wellington. So I made a phone call because I was checking up about the blog thing. And um, I was on the phone to my friend. And then another phone call came through. So after hanging up, probably about 20 minutes later, I got this answering machine message and then I rang the person and the person's name was Shelley and she works in the defence. She's the MA to the CA, which is she's the military assistant to the chief of army. And they asked me if I would be able to alter the jacket for the um, CA so that I, she could wear it. Um, yes, she, we have our first female chief of army. And um, so she could wear it um, up in Auckland, and for some photos and she has an aglet i'll actually insert a photo here because i took one uh, insert a photo there i've actually covered her name but if you google it it will come up with who it is so i don't care as much but i did just take a photo without um the name on it and so i had to go into the skin guy now he's gone and grafted off something there just to check out to see what that is and he did a full skin um, check over again I think I'll go in another six months so I'll love they'll I got a month to find out what that was um, so we'll see and I went and then I went into defense house to speak with the CA and the MA to the CA and I bumped into so many people I know it was fantastic I mean I if you haven't and don't know my backstory, I was military in Auckland. I was also military in Australia. I was in the RAF in Australia and the RNZAF in New Zealand. And I left the military in 2001 and I went and worked for somebody else. Then after I had children, I became a reservist for the Air Force and I worked in the city. Now I then after that job got the tailorist job at Trentham Army Camp for the entire Wellington region so hence the reason they rang me for the uniform. That was the short vision because we're talking over a decade and then I bumped into some amazing people that I hadn't seen for quite some time. So with a new CA, you've got a new SMA and the new SMA actually happens to be a friend of mine. So um, I haven't actually, I've done lots of work for him. He's come to me with um, uniform and I work his uniform here and civvies and stuff like that. So lovely guy, absolutely amazing guy. Um, so I found out so the CA had only been in from Wednesday last week and I saw her on Monday so fresh new off the boat and then also the SMA he actually hadn't come back down from Auckland but he's down here now and just over the moon that a friend of mine is the SMA which is Sergeant Major of the Army just putting that out there so really good so um so that was a really Good uplifting day after my uh, CRAP day on Sunday. So there you go. By my little scratch of my nose. I had to put plaster on it today because I took the plaster off and it was sticky. So I put another one on. So you can't even see. Can't even see. See? Can't see. Then Tuesday. Let's have a look what I've got here. Um, ooh, la 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 la. So Tuesday, I, I, so when I came home on Monday night, I started working on one of the jackets. I've got two jackets to do um, and started working on the second jacket on the Tuesday morning. And at 10 o'clock, the um, driver for the CA popped out to pick up the jackets and because there's a photo at 11.30. So off they went. I did some hand sewing for a guy. Um, I'll show you actually. Oh, my little clips. All right. So this gentleman had um, holes around the neck, his neckline, 
and I think it was about five or six holes around his neckline. So I just had to darn them. So some are relatively big. Um, I don't know if I can find any. That's good, right? I can't find any to show you. Oh, I done there. That little spot there. Can you see it? No. Nope. Oh, actually, I might darn that. That's a hole there. That's right on the seam. So I might actually, I didn't see that one. I'll put a pin in it. Okay, so that's pinning a pin in it over there. Oh, okay, I didn't tell him to come pick that up. Um, so I did that on Tuesday. Yes, I didn't tell him to come pick it up. Wednesday, I had <laughs> Wednesday I was doing my grading for my red ball dress and I have a size 12 a single size 12 and I'm cutting it down to a size 8 in the bust area and waist and um, so I had to grade that down and then when I tried it on her I had to shorten I didn't shorten the length I wanted to do it when I was when I was on her body so I shortened the length on her body so the paper I've um done that with the pattern piece so the pattern piece got cut out so um, you have three bodices two aligning ones interlining so you got uh, fabric interlining lining so three of those got cut out and it's a full skirt it's a full skirt do you guys want to see the pattern you want to see the pattern don't you i'll go get the pattern So it's got a boning top there. There's the line drawings. Okay, so yeah, so I had to take it down from a size 12 there and I drop it down to a size 10. So so unlike graded, uh, unlike um, multi-patterns, you actually have to do a proper grade down with those. So I did that. Um, her hips belong to a size 12, so I just have to grade the waist, uh, the top of the hips coming up to the waist and grade that down. But I'm going to do that as I build it, which is cool. Obviously, a full skirt. Uh, that was a nightmare. It's made of red satin. It will be made of red satin. And I had to, um, it was wider than my table because the pattern pieces are like wider than my table. And so I had to fold them um salvage on top of salvage not fold long ways i had to fold short ways to um cut the skirt pieces out so that was a driven mad but anyway back to wednesday so i'm making and doing this bodice cutting the bodice out and at 11 13 the power went out so knowing that we've had a few power cuts recently due to the fact that they are doing up a couple of the powery stationary things that are at our street what are they called the big green ugly boxes that hold all our electricity in them one of those i'm i'm not mechanically minded don't care but those things that hold our power that's what i care about anyway so up the top of our street in our loop um they just put a new one in and i didn't know they were going to have a power cut anyway so then victoria texted me and said mum i finish at 1 30 today are you able to come and get me because I um, have no buses coming? Yep, lost train of thought, thought of something else. <sighs> Squirrel. And um, yeah, so I went and picked her up because it's not like I could do much. It was dark in the room. It started to get really super cold in the room, like down to 12 degrees. And Stacey doesn't work in 12 degrees. So I went out, picked her up, come back home. And then I sat in the lounge and I did something. I can't remember. I did something in the lounge, got my other book. Anyway, so that was that day. So by 4.15, the power went ting, 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 and all back on. So that was okay. So it was in time for dinner. Mr. Christopher cooked dinner. <laughs> right. And then on yesterday, on yesterday, yesterday, um, didn't know if I was going to get another power cut. 
didn't know where they were up to. I do now because I went walking. Yesterday morning went out walking and they still had the temporary um, generator and then they had the big permanent electrical thing in there. So I was assuming that it was going to be a power cut again and it was not. So we went, so mum said, oh, if you haven't got a power cut, oh, I might come over for a cup of tea. Okay, mind you, didn't work the day before because no power. I said, yeah, yep, still got power, still got power, still got power. Didn't know when it was going to go out. And she came and sat down for a couple of hours from about 10 o'clock until just after 12 and had a cup of tea, had a natter, um, gave her some things that we have for her to go in her house so she can get them out of my house and they can wait at her house until we sort them out. And then I went back and cut out the full dress. The full dress is cut out now, so it's just a case of sitting down and zenning and sewing the dress um procrastination of fear of stuffing up is what keeps me from doing things like this after 33 years of sewing <laughs> 34 i don't know so many years of sewing and i still freak out so i um then i got a phone call from my friend stacy yes we're both stacy's funny story tell your story funny story so when I met Stacy I had just been posted down here with my ex-husband and um my ex-husband's name is Anthony now Stacy's last name is Anthony and um yeah I might have told you guys this story before if I had bear with and um so when I got divorced I did say oh god I got rid of my Anthony she goes yeah I and mean, she was actually had a partner for quite some time she said he won't help me get rid of mine. And she now is married and she has a different last name. So I thought I'd share that. I thought it was pretty funny. It's funny. It's funny, haha. -ha. Anyway, so she came ahead, sit down for a couple of hours, which was really good. Actually, no, probably just an hour and a half. It was nice. It was good to catch up. Uh, we get on like really well. She's like a little sister. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And she loves toasted banana sandwiches which I taught her when I first came down here because their kids are my kids age so she's got two girls and yeah so they fall in the same um year level um so yeah so it was we met at kindy kind of thing on my first couple of days of kindy my daughter's probably laying in my bed I just heard my bedroom creaking upstairs can you hear it it's my bedroom she's in it laying in the sun because it's sunny in there so then, um, so then what brings us to today. So today I knew I had the dress there and I knew I had to do it. And I knew that procrastination was going to get to me because I started doing something yesterday afternoon after I'd cut out the whole red dress. Once I got to the whole red dress, I'm like, full day, I'm going to work on this dress. And then I'm going to let it hang for two days. And then I'll get young Jessica in and we'll fit it to her um, length because she is a shorty patorty. And so... Mr. Christopher has been on me. Now, he's not hes not coming over yet. He's hes over the Nui Hill doing some work over there. So I've got at least 45 minutes to tell you about this. Won't take that long. Don't worry. Don't, don't hit stop and look for the scroll for the next one, okay? I promise you it won't take that long. Anyway, so I'm a Gen X and Gen X, no sure shim redemption, redemption, right? Everybody... I'm going to say everybody. Everybody has probably seen that movie. That is a Gen X. It is a fantastic movie. I love it and hate it in the same aspect. I hate it when somebody gets committed and to put into jail for something they didn't do. And um, so it's got Morgan Freeman in it and it's got um, Tim Robbins. He's married to the Segway girl. Segway girl, I think lovely guy he was in Top Gun wasn't my favorite character in Top Gun but I do know he was in Top Gun and um no Tom Cruise wasn't my favorite isn't my favorite character ever oh my dogs are going Victoria's up there she's got to stop them I'm not going to anyway so ensure shemp redemption I'm not gonna I'm not gonna um spoil alert anything for anyone but there is a like a um sack a sack like a duffel bag that is used now mr christopher for those that don't know is a plumber and he has to go on roofs and he has to go under floors and one of the hardest things for him to do is get all his tools 
under there with him. Now, he's not the smallest lad in the world. He's not the biggest either, but he's trying to get under more floorboards because he's trying to lose weight. And, well, and he's doing a really good job of it, just saying, okay, really proud of him. Um, super conscious of what he eats now, which is the main thing. Anyway, this is not a story about food watching. Um, so he's asked me to design a duffel bag for him that he can put his tools in, um, also put a wallet or his phone in that can stay safe in there and his car keys and also pockets inside that can help um, store stuff that are uh, little and would, you know, like little plummy bits, okay, and a tool bag. So I've gone out and I bought the fabric for it and he went and bought a flexi bucket and cut the bottom off a flexi bucket about that high for the base because it needs to be a firm base. It's all about the beast, about the beast, about the beast. Anyway, and he um, just lately when he's done a few jobs, he had to go on a roof the other week and he took a photo of the bucket on a, on the roof and him on a ladder or something or other. Way more safer than that, but, you know, because I don't let him go on roofs if it's windy or anything, and sometimes it is here. Anyway, he sent me a picture of that, and he said, imagine if I had something that would store my stuff in that I could carry a lot easier than this bucket. But I think I got the, the, the gist of what he was trying to get at. <laughs> yeah. Let's just say I gave him the look on a text, and I can give him the look on the text. So he got the, the look. Then he was, um, he, when he was down in Dunners, um, my friend's something underneath the house blew, and he had to talk her how to turn the water off while he was in Dunners. And then the day he came home, he came and filled back up his truck because he doesn't leave his truck at the airport full of tools. And he, because um, I won't drive him in because I'm mean. He's not mean. He drives me in at silly o'clock. Anyway, he has this bucket and he's got to get under her floorboards. So we've already done a roof. He has to get under her floorboards and he sends me a picture of the bucket. Now, I'm, it was Monday and I was at singing with Victoria and Victoria said, oh, um, Chris has just sent a picture. I don't understand what it is. I said, oh. Oh, okay. And so I sort of pulled over and had a look at the picture and I responded with the look again. Real fast. The text look of the look. So just imagine what I would have texted him. Anyway, so I'm in hysterics. Daughter is like, what the heck is going on? I have no idea what what is going on with this whole thing. So long story short, short story long, I this week, yesterday, started designing the bag the duffel bag. So today, instead of working on the red dress, because I really want to have a good time doing it, I'm going to show you the duffel bag. So I've got the bodkin holding it because I just, this is not the rope that's going to go through it. This is just something to um, show. So my bodkin just pulled it through twice. So this is the bag here. Now, if you're underneath a, um, look at that. If you're underneath, sorry, proud moment. If you're underneath a house and it's dark, um, you've got a reflective tape around the bag so you can see and also a strip on the bottom. Hopefully the bag's not facing you like this. <laughs> I did think of that, but you know. And on the front, you have a pocket, but it's like a cargo pocket. Okay, stuck together with Velcro, and because you don't want to put domes or anything on this, and it opens out, and you can put your phone, your keys, or whatever you need to go into there. Now, he has no idea I've started this, let alone pretty much finished it. Now, my problem is, is being the duffel bag that it is, I am concerned about the items falling out the top. Now, like I said, now I can't even open it. I spent half an hour shutting it. So this is why rope, like a nylon rope, would be better than this cotton rope that I've got. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. 
Right, it's open. So inside it is, um, it's, this, is a, this is like a canvas, not a canvas, but a, like a PV, PVC canvas. So not like a waterproof canvas, a bit heavier than that. Like I said, you've got the, the thing on the front, you've got your tape all the way around and on the inside, you have a pocket for your specialty little items that you want. All right. So, and it is all connected with brand new Velcro. Which will take any tradie five seconds to make dirty. So you've got black, brand new Velcro in there for a pocket. Okay, which double stitch at the bottom because it's also stitched with that on top of it. And, yep, and on the bottom, this is what he cut out for the flexi cut, uh, the flexi bottom. So it's something hard on the bottom, so your tools can go on there and not pierce through the layer. Only this is just probably a bit bigger than the flexi. Um, I guess I gave it a little bit too much seam allowance, but that's the bag there. And you can see onto the side where the other thing is. A little inside pocket but that's big enough for like flanges and little tapware things that you can get lost really easy so I made that for him that's what I've done today he has no idea and I probably won't tell him I'll see how long it takes him to watch this <laughs> so yep yeah, that's it what do you think now I did think about putting the an attachment down the bottom here so that if he goes up on a roof it can go over his, him there like that he can carry it over his shoulder um there on his back when he goes up on a roof um and then his hands are free and he can go up um, but it's mainly he wanted it to tie around his foot but i actually really really believe that i'm going to stick a tab down the bottom with two um grommets in it so that can loop through and make like a backpack, backpack, duffel bag. So that's what I've made and done this week. I know it's not much, but one whole day with no power was, um, I've got to tell you the story. This is a little bit funny. So Victoria came home at 1.30. Well, I went and picked her up. We went to the supermarket, then we came home and she wanted to make herself a cup of soup. Of course, she goes, oh, I'm going to make a cup of soup, but I can't because there's no electricity. And I said, yep, it's okay. I know how to do the whole um, light, the, light the gas hobs and we can do it. I said, you just use a lighter. Turn on. She goes, oh, no, I'm going to burn myself. I'll do it. So I stood up and came over and I lit it up and she boiled some water and she made herself a cup of tea, a cup of soup. Favourite at the minute is continental cup of soups, tomato. So then she, th then she walks past the little couch remote holder and she picked up the remote. I said, oh, what are you going to do? She goes, I want to watch TV. I said, oh, yeah. She says, yeah. I said, you're going to watch TV? She goes, yeah. I said, oh, okay. So what are you going to watch? She goes, I want to watch Gilmore Girls. I said, oh, yeah. She's standing there and she's like, got a cup of soup. She turns it on and then she goes, she says, I said, you can't do that without electricity, can you? She goes, no. So yes, she sat back down and started watching reels on her phone instead. Heaven forbid they pick up a book. No, actually, she is my bookworm. So, yeah, I was actually reading a book. No, I wasn't. <laughs> Says Stacey. I was sending reels to um, Mr. Christopher, um, our group chat with his daughter, and um, my brother, my brother's group chat. And, yes, he did send me something at one time. He goes, still a power cut, huh? And I went, yeah, because I was sending reels. Anyway, so that's pretty much me. I don't know how long I've been gas bagging for. Um, a whiles, I guess. I guess a whiles. Um, and is there anything else I wanted to talk about? I think I'm pretty much done. What did I put in that? Oh, in my monthly makes. Oh, I'm just going to go with my monthly makes. No, no, my make nines. My nine makes. No, my make nines. I guess I've been around the wrong way in my book. So in my make nines, I had these nine items. I had the Chloe. 
the Chloe Trench by Angela Wolf. I had the Assemble Line open dress. I've had the Star Like Tail. Now, this is what I should have done. This is what I should have made and was going to make, should have made when I was um, doing my um, collab with Ruan. And I've made the Patent Emporium. I've made the Country Cow Mac. Three of those. Yeah. Three of those. Haven't made the Stylark Elwood jeans. There's two Stylarks I haven't made. I've made the um, assembly line top. I think I've made two. And the Sewing Revival pants. I made those last Friday. So I'm halfway through making my jacket. And I have the Tatum, the Elwood jeans, and the Chloe trench. Still yet to make. So I did, go, I did pretty good. I did one on the 11th and one on the 26th of February. And then I went May, July, August, September, October, November, December. Mm. And winter's definitely gone for my long coat. But I still will make it for next season. Okay, so that's um, those are my make, make nine. So I, I've filled out my little book and drawn my little pictures on things that I've made there. That's not, still not been made. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And my, yeah, my make nine pants, the classic pants. I'm quite keen to make the shorts. I'll wash my fabric. I'll wash this fabric to make. Um, oh, I love the smell of my washing. Um, made, I want to make the shorts out of this. It's quite a nice firm fabric. And I washed up my linen. That's washed up really nice and soft. And I got it cheap because there are little black dots in it, but I can't find the black dots now. So either a win-win, or I think it cost me like two fifty a meter. It's linen blend. And this one here has really pulled out the um, what do you call these things again? Oh, I can't. Even, oh, I know what they're called. I can't think of them. I'd rather say, hey, can't remember the name of them, but tip. Uh oh, right uh. But yeah. Um I saw a shirt, a striped shirt. Somebody said, Does anyone know where this pattern is or what this pattern is? And somebody said, Oh, it looks like this shirt. And so I went into it and I said, It's exactly that shirt, and it's a striped shirt. So I think I might make it. I don't know if I'm too overly keen about the yellow. What does that look like, guys? Did I tell you about my little finger? How the ladder dropped on it. And boo-booed it. I banged it today. Right on the knuckle. This knuckle is still really, really sore. That's why I haven't got it fixed. Really, really sore. So, yep. All right, that's enough from me. That is very much enough. Um, if you've enjoyed my content, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and help me get to 2,000. That would be fan diddly -tastic. Um Like and share if you know anybody else that would like to listen to my ramblings. So I made the bag here for Mr. Christopher. And yes, it will be downstairs waiting for you to show up and have a look. When I'm going to hide it, kind of. Um, it will be in my fabric stash, Mr. Christopher, if you're watching this. Okay, for you to go and have a look at it. Uh, you're welcome and it's a prototype so of course there's always up for debate on what we can change and alter and everything like that to make that plastic fit in the bottom i don't know i don't know if it's the right thing dude hmm. anyway and then we've got um the red dress should be up for next friday's sews and next saturday i'm going out to the spring fair with mom i think i went to last spring fair and put some information or some photos of the day it was a beautiful day and i said to mum yesterday when she was over i said i'm not 100 percent sure it's going to be a nice day because i just i just haven't felt a nice 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 day yet but it's bound to be coming one's got to be coming and then i have um yeah i'm trying to think what else just, I want to make the red dress next week. Let it hang. I just want a full day. Full day of it. Got some ball dresses coming up to alter. I can't remember when this one is. I think it's October the 12th. Yes, it's October the 12th. It's the next one, which happens to be my daddy's birthday. So, mm. 
Righty ho then, I will let you go. Please stay well, stay warm, stay dry, keep cool, keep on sewing, hydrate, and have no regrets. I went for a drive to uh, Paraparumu and we got some awesome fabrics. No regrets. None. Oh, and I wrote some stuff up, which is getting edited. Because she's just as crazy as I am, and I love it. <laughs> I love it. But she's more academic than I am. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in on this Friday Sews. Don't forget to go out and about and check out everyone else's hashtag Friday Sews. There's some amazing um, sewists out there. I can pop some down that I regularly watch in my description if you want to go onto theirs. And um, yeah. Yay. Alrighty then. Take care and I'll see you the next time I'm looking at you. Subscribe, like, and share. Just to let me know that you care